Hi, I'm Igor, I'm a data scientist living in London and welcome to another episode of this time series crash course. In this video we'll cover the ARIMA model, which is arguably the most important and useful forecasting model within the whole domain. Particularly the things we'll cover are what is the ARIMA model, what are the requirements for the ARIMA model, how we fit an ARIMA model and how we could do all in Python. So let's get into it. On your screen now is the notebook that we're going to work through that tells us all about the ARIMA model and how we can use it in Python. So in my previous posts, we've kind of covered two main things, which were um, auto regression, where we forecast previous time values um, for the future, and moving average models, where we use the previously fit forecast errors to forecast into the future. Now what ARIMA does is that it combines those two things as well as the differencing, which is called the integrated component, to form ARIMA. So you have AR, which is, you know, um, that's the like acronym. Then you have I, which is integrated, and MA, which is the moving average. So spell that as ARIMA, right? So that's where it comes from. It's kind of an acronym of all those three things combined together. So what is ARIMA? So ARIMA, like I've said before, is a thing that has a combination of autoregressive integrated moving average. So it's a combination of all those three things together. And let's just quickly recap over what those three things are. So autoregression, kind of like what I just said, is where we forecast future values using a linear combination of the previously observed values. So what we have here, we have um, you know yt, which is kind of a value we're trying to forecast, and then we have the previous lags, yt minus one, yt minus two, yt minus p. And the goal of uh, autoregression is basically to find these parameters thigh, or, so, or these coefficients, um, and which best coefficients for which lags give us the, the future forecast. Again, I've done a whole video on autoregression, so make sure you check that out. Um, but it's just a recap of what autoregression is. And the goal of um, autoregression is to find, like I said, these thigh components and also the best value of P. So these are the number of lags we include within the model. Um, the I part of ARIMA, which stands for integrated, is basically just a differencing. So don't worry too much about why it's called integrated. It's a bit more detailed than we really need to go into in this video. Um, but the differencing requirement is there to ensure we have a stationary time series. Again, stationary time series, very important. I've got a whole video on this, which I highly recommend you check out. But basically, we need a stationary time series to ensure that the statistical properties of our distribution or our time series distribution stays constant throughout time. In other words, its mean and variance are constant. Um, the ways you can do this is through differencing, which is one way, but also you can do well, the differencing will stabilize the mean, but we also want to apply the logarithmic and box Cox transform, as I've written here. Um, and what this does is stabilize the variance. So again, I've got videos on all these topics in a previous um, episodes of the series, so make sure to check those out if you want to know more detail about them because, like I said, I'm not going to go into too much detail about them here because I've already covered them. But that's what integrated means. And just remember, integrated is more differencing um, than it is kind of integration, as, as you know, you probably would think. And then we have the moving average value um, or the moving, ar moving average model. So this is, again, I covered this in the last episode. But basically what we're doing here is that we're trying to fit these theta 1, theta 2, theta q. Um, q is the number of lags we include of the forecast errors. So these are the fitted errors of the model. And basically we're trying to find the best values that, you know, in other words, saying what was the errors and can, can we correct for them going forward for the future forecast. Like I said, whole video on this. Make sure you check that out if you want to know more detail about moving average. Here's just a recap to build the completeness of this one episode. Um, and basically what we do for ARIMA is we combine all these things together. So what we have here is we have yt dashed. Now the dashed means it's differenced. And then we have the thigh one, thigh p, or um, which are the autoaggressive components. And then we have these theta one, theta q, which are the moving average components. So all we've done, basically we've combined together AR and MA and just sum them up. And then we've also done uh, dashed, which means that it's a difference value. And that's all it really more is. It's basically like an amalgamation of all those three things together. So we have a best of both worlds. And when we're fitting the model, the model can choose how many, you know, auto regressive components it wants and how many moving average components it wants. Um, and again, we it fits that using some things called MLE, which we'll discuss in a sec. But I hope that makes sense. I think it's quite intuitive. It's just, you know, giving it, giving it everything and seeing from this quote unquote everything, what are the best bits and bobs I can pick out to fit to this data I have. 
Um, that's the way I like to think of it, and that's what most Python libraries would do when you're fitting a remodel. It will automatically find the best values for you um, because you're basically getting everything to choose from. So it's a really neat model because, like I said, it's best of both worlds between AR and MA. Um, and it really is kind of like the gold standard. And to be honest, it's not overly complicated. Um, it may look complicated, like all of these weird equations you see on the screen here. Um, but in reality, it's pretty intuitive once you get the hang of both AR and MA models separately. So, I kind of hinted at this before, but the requirements for it are that we need stationary time series, um, which can be done for two ways, basically. Like, you can have... Um, a stationary time series by using differencing, which stabilizes the mean, and then something like a box Cox transform or logarithm transform um, that will also stabilize the variance for you. The reason you want this is that if your data belongs to the same distribution, that means you can model it using things like MLE, maximum likelihood estimation, um, and so they fit distribution to your data. Again, covered this topic before, but that's basically the reason why you need a stationary data set. So your whole data belongs to the same distribution, so you can use um, estimation techniques such as MLE to find the best parameters to your model. And by parameters, I mean thi1, thi2, theta1, theta2, and so on. Those are the values we want to find, and having a stationary time series allows us to find those values in a valid way. The next one is kind of a harder one to do, and these are like the orders. So by orders, we mean essentially what is the value of P and what is the value of Q. So how many lags and how many errors do we include in our model? Also, how many differences do we include in our model? Do we difference once, twice, um, thrice, so forth, right? Now, one of the easiest ways to make sure our, you know, what the difference is basically there to make our data stationary. And what we can do is use something called the augmented Dickey Fuller test. Um, I've talk about, talked about this test before, um, but basically it's a statistical test that tests whether our data is stationary or not. And basically you difference it once, you do the ADF test, is it stationary? No, you difference it again, is it stationary? Yes, stop there. So in other words, in that case, our integrated component would be two, right? Because we difference it twice to be stationary. That's quite simple to do. The AR and the MA part are kind of harder, but they can be deduced through two ways. So AR can be something called the partial autocorrelation function. Again, done a video on this before, um, so make sure you check that out. And uh, MA components or the orders can be found through the autocorrelation function. Again, got a video on this. But basically the point of that is that you plot the partial autocorrelation function and also autocorrelation function. And you see at what point the lag start becoming non-significant for impacting the forecast. Again, I'll go for an example of that. Um, and essentially what the autocorrelation and partial autocorrelation do is measures how correlated is this lag with the current time step. And that's kind of the goal. And if it's really correlated, that means it's quite predictive. If it's not correlated, it's not that predictive. Um, so you can't get in the picture. Again, if you're not too familiar with it, make sure you check out the other video um, that I've done on both those um, topics. However, kind of a better way of doing it, and it's kind of what I do in practice, is that I would normally just get a model to go over loads of different orders so like try different values of p and q and see which one is the best and then it will just measure the best using something called the a k key information criterion or the bayesian information criterion and basically it will just say like this is your training set try all these combinations and give me a combination that gives the best results in a testing set right but like, kind of like how parameter tuning you do in traditional machine learning models that's kind of a better way of doing it. Again, it's more robust. Um, you're more likely to find the best values instead of these pure statistical techniques. And typically, with time series models, we haven't got so much data that this is not going to be that computer intensive and it's going to be a reasonable amount of time of training a model. Um, it's not going to be like days and days like you see these large neural nets. Um, it's going to be pretty reasonable and you can do it on most machines um, quite easily, in my opinion. The next bit is I kind of hinted it before is that estimation. So after we've, we've you know got a stationary time series, we've selected our orders. We then need to estimate the parameters. And by parameters, I mean you know those coefficients we're after are for the auto regression components and the moving average components. Now the way this is done, I kind of hinted it before, is that we use something called a maximum likelihood estimation. Um, so MLE deduces the optimal values of the coefficient that produces the highest probability of obtaining that data. Basically, a fancy way of saying it finds the best coefficients that are most likely going to give us the best forecast. You know, again, if you're not familiar with MLE, it's kind of used everywhere within statistics, so I really recommend you check it out. 
um, but it's not overly too complicated to understand. There's loads of videos on, online as well that you can check out um, if you want to know more. Um, but basically, the MLE will fit some sort of distribution to our data, typically the normal distribution. Um, and from that, it will then find the best values of, like I said, theta 1, theta, um, to theta 2, thi 1, thi 2, so forth, um, that will generate the best forecast possible. So I hope it all makes sense. Again, this kind of is a um, like a combination of all my previous videos into one. So I definitely recommend checking out you know things I mentioned. If you're not familiar with them, check out those videos in this playlist. Um, because like I said, Arima has a lot of, kind of background knowledge you need to know to really thoroughly understand what's going on. Um, but we've covered all those topics before, and they're not too complicated. You just go go through those videos to really understand what's going on. Um, but again, I hope that makes sense. Again, the Arima is not too difficult to understand once you have all the like pre-knowledge because all it is is just a combination of all those things together uh, to generate this final model. So make sure you check out those videos. Right, now let's put all this theory into practice and we'll discuss the, you know, how we actually apply it in Python. So we'll start with just reading in a basic data set. Again, this is the airline passenger volume data set that I've used in all my videos. It's not too complicated. Don't worry too much about it. It's just here for visual purposes because, as you can see, it's it's like uh, really increasing through time, and it's got a really obvious seasonality that's increasing through time as well. Because it has a you know increasing variance and increasing mean, because the trend's going up and the fluctuations are increasing, then the data is not stationary. So we need to difference it and then also apply the box Cox transform um, to stabilize the mean and stabilize the variance. So the way we do that is by simply calling the box cox function from scipy stats. And then what we do is that we apply it to our data set, which is hashtag passengers in this case. That's like the series of this data frame. And then we plot the and then we plot the results. The reason we're not doing the differencing here is because in most packages the differencing is done for you. Um, and so all you really got to do is demo the variance ahead of time. Remember, a REMA, the I stands for integrated. So in other words, most ARIMA packages would find the integrated component for you. As you can see here, the the box box Cox transforms done it quite well. We've um, you know got pretty much similar fluctuations for our time, which is great. That's exactly what we wanted. The next part is the modeling. So we need to find the best orders. By finding the best orders, remember we use the partial autocorrelation function and also the auto correlation function. So as written here, what we're going to do is that we're going to difference the data, and then we're going to plot both of them right plot acf and plot pacf and these functions come from the stats models package so nicely does it all for us there we go ignore not ignore this this is just some jupyter notebook nonsense uh, but as you can see here we have the autocorrelation and for autocorrelation we see it kind of is important until lag 12. uh kind of a lag 12 that's where it kind of all, they all become in the blue region and the blue this blue region signifies whether they're statistically significant or not. Um, and so in other words, if you're inside the blue region, they're not really going to be that impactful for the, for the next forecast. Likewise for partial autocorrelation, as you can see here, the kind of after the value of 12, they're all pretty much within the kind of um, non-significant region. And so in this case, I would probably take both the P components to be up to 12 and the Q components to be up to 12. Um, so in other words, we're going to include the lags up to the 12th lag and the errors up to the 12th lag as well. So now what we're going to do, we're going to fit an ARIMA model. So we're going to call ARIMA from the stats models package um, and then we're going to split our data and train and test and then we're going to fit the ARIMA model specifying our order. So remember we had 12 for both the P component and the Q component and we're going to get difference just once in this case because difference in just once will probably give us enough um, stationarity requirement. And then we're going to do our forecast. And then because we did a box Cox transform, we need to do the inverse of it to get back to the original units of our time series. Again, this is not too complicated here. I've also linked this notebook in the description below. Um, so if you want to know more or go through this in your own time, then I highly recommend you check out this notebook. Um, again, also the blog that's related to this notebook is also linked below. So if you want to get this in more readable format and you know go through it in your own pace, then I highly recommend you check out the blog and also the notebook. So simply by running this function, ignore all this. This is just some you fail to converge. It's just a bunch of you know uh, compute problems that happen sometimes in a real model. But don't worry too much about it. 
So after we've got our forecast, we're going to plot it. And then here we have our train set, our test set in orange, and our forecast in green. As you can see, the forecast is pretty good, right? It's captured the trend very well, um, and the seasonal component is pretty good. So, you know, you see here the real models done quite a good job at matching a trade their testing set and a trading set. So yeah, as you can see here, a real model, highly recommend you try it out. Um, it gets pretty good results in most cases, um, and it's kind of like the gold standard of forecasting nowadays. Let's quickly recap over the key points we discussed in this video. The Arima model is a combination of autoregression, differencing, also known as the integration components, and moving average models. By combining all these things together, it's better able to fit in multiple data because it can utilize the pros of both the autoregression components and also the moving average components. As we saw in the Python notebook, it gave pretty good results. So it's definitely a model I recommend you check out, particularly when you're building an initial model for your data set. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about time series and forecasting, then make sure you check out the other videos in this playlist. Also to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.